we're turning away business because we don't have enough people to work. It's affecting businesses from, from big to small these days, not having enough people to work. <laughs> All right, this episode is all about transcendent leaders, women leadership, and post pandemic workplace. Where are we? My guest is Karen Bullock, and I'm really excited today. I'm really excited about where we are because we, this is just such a crucial topic. And again, Karen's here today. Karen, welcome to the show, and let's get into it. So, again, transcendent leaders, let's start by what does that mean, and how does it relate to a post pandemic world? And people not going back to work? Well, that's a great question because transcendence is such a big word. And, you know, there's a part of me even that says, oh my God, you know, how can I be talking about transcendence? But it's, it's, it's when you boil it down, transcendence is rising above, right? It's getting out of the crap. It's getting out of the drama. It's getting out of of all the negativity and it's rising above and getting leaders to a place where they can see the real big picture, not just the, the big picture that, that we're taught as leaders to see, but the big picture as far as humanity, as far as people, and as far as our collective consciousness and our interconnectivity. So it sounds like a big thing and it's not easy, but it really is a lot more accessible than it sounds like. And it's so important in the post-pandemic world today, because to your point, people aren't going back to work. You know, we've had the great resignation. Now everybody's talking about the quiet quitting, right, that everybody's doing. And, and you've got organizations that are trying to figure out how to get their people to come back to the office whether that makes sense. People are like, no, I don't want to do that. And it's just, it's really a difficult time for leadership right now. I mean, it's really a difficult time. And transcendence, looking at things from that holistic standpoint, is a path forward through that. So, okay, because this, this conversation I have often with my, my leaders, right, we're, we're talking about transformation, transcendent, these words are, you know, bring us together as a collective, as, as the universe, as our energies, we're all connected together, yeah. right? So this conversation is actually something we have often on, on this channel and, and, and with, with the people in our community. Why, why is it taking so long to permeate corporate America with this, this newness that we've been discussing for, for years? You know, that's a great question. And I'm not sure I totally have the answer to that because if, if anything, I feel like the pandemic was such a wake up call for all of us and especially for corporations around a lot of different issues but the workplace culture and how employees are treated was certainly a huge part of what came up from it. You know, I heard the most horrendous story the other day. A friend of a friend of mine was telling me who lives in the Midwest someplace, I won't name it, but she said that there was an organization that decided that they were going to have all their employees come back to the office. Right. And the employees pushed back and said, you know, no, we don't want to do that. And finally, the CEO, after lots of conversations, said, OK, you know, we won't make you all come back all the time. I don't know whether there was a compromise in there or not. But but anyway, the day after he made that decision, the board of directors fired him. So it, it's, you know, we talk about leadership being from the top and we, off, we often talk, talk about the CEOs and we, we talk about the, you know, the executive leadership team, but we, all, we don't often talk about board of directors. You know, we talk about the fact that there's not a lot of female representation on board of directors, but we don't talk about the impact that board of directors can actually have on the corporate culture. And, I, you know, I wonder because they're not, in it on a day-to-day -day basis, and this is pure speculation, and, and I don't want to offend anybody who is board of directors and doing a good job, but it just seems like 
maybe we really need to start thinking about that level of corporations and talk, getting them to think about more than just their fiscal responsibilities and their fiduciary responsibilities as a director. That's actually really brilliant. I haven't heard it taken to that level because even this level, the C-suite and realizing we're flipping the triangle, which is Tony H back in yeah. Zappos and God rest his soul, missed on this earth and what he, he gets to start and we bring forward. But his was all about that. It's, it's, it, it comes from the, your vision gets to be part of, and this is very much aligns with what you were saying, the vision of the employees gets to align with the corporate vision because otherwise you're just not satisfied and, and what that looks like in your worth and, and who you are. Right. Absolutely. Yep. And now we're talking about the corporate because it is it is starting to filter through. But that piece that the actual board of directors who who holds the purse strings, right? Yeah. That that conversation hasn't started yet, and 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 that's brilliant. I have not realized that level, and yet it's there, right? It's, oh, it's, it's there. there. I, I mean. At the end of the day, the CEO, the, the the top executives, they all answer to the board. The board's the one that hires and fires them, particularly CEOs. And we know, we know, we see every day that if a CEO is not doing what the board wants them to do, you know, they're gone. I, you know, we, we talk about, you know, you talk about a precarious position, but but being a CEO these days especially leading up to the pandemic was a pretty precarious position because of of some of the dictates of the board of directors. I mean not in, you know not in all companies not all the way you know all the way around but really struck me when I had that conversation that maybe we're yes we need to talk, be talking to the C suite but maybe we need to be talking beyond that and maybe that's another reason why it's great for there to be female representation on board of directors. Well, it goes to that because, well, I want to get the next question is going to be, and then how does this like impact women? But the piece here also is they, the, the blind eye that, you know, the, 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 the boomers are retiring and, and the Xers and the, they're the smallest group. The millennials are the smallest group. It's not going to be able to replace the numbers. And the millennials and they're 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 again they they are not motivated as much by money because they don't have any. The houses are astronomical. Their student loans are astronomical. And stuff. So they're saying, you know what? Then I, I I what I want is more important, and and I believe in them. I really do for that reason that that will be what brings us forward. But labor kind of gets to matter at this point because not only are people not going back and the boomers are retiring there's going to be and it's going to be crickets there's going to be no one there to do the work if you don't start listening well we're, we're we're already experiencing that right i mean even even in something as simple as trying to get you know work done in your home these days, right? How many people do you talk to that can't even, you know, I, I was talking to my heating and cooling person the other day because we had to have some some stuff done. And he's like, we're turning away business because we don't have enough people to work. So it, it's it's affecting businesses from from big to small these days, not having enough people to work. And to your point, I think people, aren't always as motivated by money these days as they were. There's a lot more to it. And again, that's where the transcendence piece of it, looking at things holistically, looking at things as an, as an integrated whole, not just looking at people saying, okay, here's your skill set, here's the salary range, here's the bucket you fit in, put, you know, here's where we're gonna put you in your organization. It's more like saying to people, okay, here's the work that needs to be done. How are we going to out get that work done in a way that meets the needs of all the various constituents in, in, the, in the process, right? Is, is there a way to create a happy medium? Now, you know, are employees always going to be able to get their own way? Are they always going to be able to work from home? No, that's completely, you know, unreasonable. But at the same time, it's, it's also completely reasonable for companies to expect that everything's going to go back to the same way it was 
prior to the pandemic because it's not. We've changed fundamentally as as people. And and the pandemic has impacted our consciousness. And in a lot of ways, it's elevated our consciousness. It's made us more aware of of who we are as people, are. who we are as 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 not only workers and family members, but also it, I feel like it touched a lot of people on a deeply spiritual. Because you you look, you know, you realize life is short, and and life is it, it made us all realize how precarious it can be. I love the wake up call. Okay, because I shake it up. I I love this. So as as leaders, and, and that, then where do we go with this? Where do we where do we bring it forward for resolution? For what's the next step forward? What what in your experience, what would you say to workers? What would you say to women? Because women are impacted more in family. Yeah. And then where would you advise and where are we going? What What is the light at the end of the tunnel or is there? Oh, I believe there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I truly do. Because we see shifting and we see people shifting. And this is such an opportunity. This this time and place right now, there's so much opportunity for for people to change. But it really starts with yourself. I mean, it starts with doing the inner work yourself. It starts by knowing what you really want, right? What's really important to you, being really clear on that. It also starts by getting rid of that programming, you know, the cultural conditioning and, and limiting beliefs that you put on yourself because you don't see possibilities. You know, we limit ourselves. You know, I, I, wrote, <laughs> I wrote in my blog yesterday about you know, a lot of people, you know, climb a ladder and they get to the top of the ladder and there's nothing there but a blank wall, right? Because they put this blinders on. Okay, I'm going to get to the top of this ladder. This is what I'm doing. They don't look at other things. They get to the top and it's like, okay, now what? And they don't see a way forward. And the way forward is to break through the wall. But we're the ones that build our walls. We're the ones that buy into the limiting beliefs. We're the ones that buy into the cultural conditioning. We're the ones that tell ourselves, oh, I can't possibly do that, right? We put our own limits on ourselves. And so it really starts with, with individuals, particularly people in leadership, but we're all in leadership. So it really starts with individuals breaking through their own walls opening up their lens of possibilities and creating a vision for themselves that they can then bring forward into the world and negotiate with other people that are doing the same thing. And in that way, we can chip away at all of this. But if you're not really clear on what you want and why you want it, then sometimes those conversations that when you're negotiating with an employer get really difficult. So at the end of the day, it all stands back to, which is always the first thing in any conversation I have with potential clients and really anyone, what do you want? What do you want? But, yep. And, and how often does a woman potentially not have been asked that question ever? Or not. Women are often not asked that question. Or if they are to ask that question, they're often afraid to answer it, honestly. Or they may not but even But they know. don't know. Or they might not even know, exactly. Okay. So, okay, so, because well, I always want to bring people forward this. So the great quiet resignation, the great quiet where you're going to work. Quiet quitting. Quiet, quiet quitting. quitting. Right, so big, it's everywhere. The quiet quitting. Someone's in that, right? And they're like, man. You know, I'm doing it. I'm I'm, I'm getting the paycheck, and 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 I'm I'm not fulfilled. And or you have the the other people are saying that they're, they're starting to do the shift back, and my kids, and 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 where I am with them, and being able to kids might pick up my kids after school. What 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 would you tell them? Their first of all, what do you want? How do you get to that? And, and what do you tell them? What advice would you give them at this moment? To really ask themselves what they want and why they're doing this. Why are they settling? Why are they tolerating things in their life that are making them miserable? 
I mean, really, that's the question we ask, because so often we tolerate things, we settle for whatever, and we rationalize it. We say, well, I need the money, so I'm just going to go through the motions and do this and focus on something else. Or, you know, I have to have this. And we don't see that we can have so much more. And so the first thing I always ask people is, is what would your like, life look like if you took all, all the restraints off. If you could if you could imagine your life to be anything you want it to be, what would it look like? And you start there. I mean, maybe you don't have all of it tomorrow, but there's probably a lot of more of it that's possible than most people would even want to admit. So, or be, be able to admit. So what you're saying is goes back to again the question, what do you want? What do you want? And, and then what is possible? If anything was possible, standing in possibility. And then moving forward with that. Not an overnight, that, yeah. maybe not top of the apple cart, but standing in what that feels like in possibility. Yeah, and you don't have, you know, you don't have to top, you don't have to necessarily topple the apple cart. And I think that's what a lot of people think is, okay, if I if I really want to have what I want, then I have to give up everything or I have to change everything. And, and that's, you know, that actually is more an excuse than it is a reality, right? It's, it's a, it's a reason people use not to, not to move forward. But the reality is you don't always have to do that. You know, you don't, you know, let's, let's take the person who's unhappy in their job. Well, you know, if I quit, then I won't have any money. I won't have this. I, you know, I won't have that. Well, nobody said you had to quit tomorrow, right? Nobody said you had to do that. But, but let's look at what you can change right now and look at where that incremental change is going to take. Because those, those changes become, they're not necessarily linear. They're often exponential. You take one step and 10 things open up instead of just the second step, right? So, you know, it's, it's a friend of mine always says when Providence move, when you move, Providence moves, right? So when you take a step forward towards your happiness, towards your fulfillment, towards what you're meant to be doing in the world, then, you know, the universe is going to meet you and, and open up those opportunities. But if you don't take that step forward, those opportunities aren't going to, aren't going to appear. Because you're going to be standing at a wall yeah, and, 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 and holding back yeah. instead of opening it up and saying, now what's possible? Right. Yeah. What I said is when you hit that blank wall, you know, you, you sort of have three choices. You can you climb back down the ladder and move someplace else and start climbing up the ladder again, but you're giving up so much. I mean, that's kind of the turning over the apple cart or Trying the baby out with a bathwater, or however you want to call it, or you can decorate. You know, you can you can decorate that blank wall at the top of the ladder the and make it comfortable and make it you know make yourself feel good that you're in a nice space, but you're not moving. You're just staying in the same place and decorating the wall. Or you can break through the wall and see all the possibilities on the other side. All right, I I love this. All right, so Karen, a little bit. There's three books behind you going on the website. Where where how can people work with you? The book's coming out, so to grab your chapter again, it's October fifth, correct? The right, launch October fifth. Okay, so how can people work with you? And and what's the first step to getting in touch with you? Well, I, I'm on LinkedIn under Karen Ann Bullock, so you can find me there. Or my website is very easy. It's livingalifeofmeaning.com because that's what I'm all about is helping people live a life of meaning. So you can go there. I offer a free one-hour consultation where pe you know, we can talk through where you are and give you opportunities to explore what's really possible for you. Livingwithmeaning.com. Livingalifeofmeaning.com. Living a life of meaning. And the link will be here. Living a life of meaning. Yeah, there we go. All right, everyone, Karen Bullock, super. This is part of the you Noble know, for Success anthology. And again, transcendent leaders, post-pandemic world. Karen, thank you for coming on today. Thank you so much for having more, me, Maureen. It was really a great conversation. Mm -hmm.